Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome uh, to Infinity Hall. Uh, delighted that you're here to see the uh, Gianni Cigara Griebel Trio. We'll be performing in a little bit. Um, Mayor's assured me that he has his guitar and will be uh, ready to rock and roll. Uh, I uh, want to thank uh, the mayor for being here this morning. I think this is the fifth or sixth year he's been with us, and uh, delighted to have him here with this uh, Rising Star Breakfast. We have a number of announcements to make here to get us started. Um, certainly, as I said, want to thank Infinity Hall, this great new venue uh, that has added so much to the city uh, since it opened last year. Uh, the tremendous events that have been uh, brought here to the uh, to this venue has been uh, nothing uh, less than spectacular. So hats off to Dan Hinks and his. And, entire team uh, for all that they've done over these last several years to uh, design this, create it, fund it, and uh, open it. So uh, again, hats off to them. I want to, certainly want to thank Bank of America uh, for being our corporate sponsor uh, this morning. Joe Gianni will be up here shortly to represent them and to introduce the mayor. Again, want to thank uh, Hart the Hartford Current and uh, Fox Connecticut for being our media sponsors this morning uh, and continuing the role that they've played in that, uh, in that arena for, for many years. Call your attention to a couple of things coming up. Uh, our first Connecticut Health Council event will be held on uh, January 30th uh, with Linda Rosenberg, who's the president and CEO of the National Council for Behavioral Health and uh, a very distinguished panel uh, on to uh, launch a what I think will be a series of discussions on a uh, critical topic. And you see the, the uh, title up there, Mental Health in the World of Healthcare Reform and how that uh, plays out, both some of the challenges and I think some of the opportunities that we have here in the state of Connecticut to take a leadership role. I want to call your attention uh, also to the fact that Winterfest is, uh, goes off to February 1st. Again, several straight years that we've had the, uh, the uh, ice skating in Bushnell Park. And thanks to all of you in this room who have made that a reality. Certainly thanks to the uh, mayor for, uh, for his leadership in getting that launched several years ago. Call your attention to the fact that uh, Connecticut Fast Track uh, will be launched on March 28th. Uh, we're hopeful of getting uh, Jim Redeker uh, to a Rising Star Breakfast sometime uh, shortly before that, not only to talk about Fast Track, but also to talk about the governor's uh, recently uh, announced uh, focus on transportation that he uh, uh, discussed in his uh, State of the State address uh, when the session opened last week, and that will clearly be a big part of his uh, budget address uh, on February 18th. Uh, those of you who have major employment sites uh, downtown, Certainly call your attention to the fact that DOT is eager to talk to you to make sure that your colleagues understand what the opportunities and schedules are for, um, for, uh, for Connecticut Fast Track as we launch a, a very important uh, transportation initiative here in, uh, in March. Hope you all saw the fact that uh, Hartford secured uh, the 2017 Cyclocross National Championships that will be held in Riverfront Park in January of 2017. Um, I've got the uh, the, uh, make sure that I have the, uh, the long underwear franchise for that um, and the uh, mutter boots. But it's, a, it's another great example of uh, a number of people working together to bring a very important uh, athletic event to this city to underscore the number of things that go on at Riverfront Park with the Dragon Boat Races, with the Hartford Marathon, uh, the leadership that Peter heard from Travelers took in bringing cycling races back as part of Envision Fest weekend. Uh, another example of that. So hats off to everyone who uh, worked on that for, uh, for bringing uh, that, that event here in 2017. Uh, I'm sure the mayor will touch on this. Uh, you might have seen out in front the Capital Workforce Partners uh, has a table with some information on uh, internships and there's been significant uh, changes uh, in improvements and enhancements to the partnership between the school system, Capital Workforce Partners and others to enhance the internship experience uh, for our young people here in the city. Uh, to give them greater opportunities and make them more, uh, if you will, workforce ready. So to Tom Phillips, to the mayor, uh, to Superintendent Navarez for all the work that's going on on that. More to come on that uh, as we go forward into this year and particularly trying to line things up uh, for this summer. Uh, I have three people that we want to recognize, uh, be a number of people to recognize, but three particularly who are moving on to, uh, to other things. Is uh, Charmaine Craig here? Yeah, is Charmaine, are you here? Ah, you are here, okay. Charmaine Craig um, is... Uh, uh, today, this morning, or this afternoon at noon, Aetna and Knox will be holding a press conference to announce a new community partnership that's going to honor Charmaine Craig, who's retiring as the community outreach director uh, at Knox after a distinguished career. It'll be a, a noon ceremony in which a tree will be planted in Charmaine's honor uh, to recognize uh, her contributions and her lifelong commitment to Hartford's people and the, uh, and the environment. Um, they also, Aetna and Knox will reveal a, a new project designed to help close ethnic and economic development disparities and health economic opportunity 
and food security. And the project is named Hartford Grown Headquarters. Uh, suffice it to say that those of us who've had the opportunity to uh, know Charmaine, know about her career, know about her contributions, uh, we are delighted uh, to, um, to be able to say a very nice thank you here this morning in honor of her recognition. She has really been a mother, as it says here in this press release, to Knox. But she's been a mother to the entire city uh, and uh, has been a tremendous supporter of those who are in need, uh, uh, both in helping them and inspiring them. So Charmaine, if you could just stand so we can recognize you and thank you for your extraordinary service over this time. And I'm, I'm delighted to say, I believe this is accurate, Charmaine, you'll be staying on the IQUILT uh, board. You've been a tremendous uh, leader for us there and we're delighted to have you. So thank you for being here this morning and let us to say thank you. Uh, another individual who's uh, leaving us after 12 years at, um, at Catholic Charities is Lois Necci. Uh, those of you who know the work that Catholic Charities does, it is, one of, it is the largest not-for-profit uh, provider of human services in the state. Uh, it has been uh, blessed with a number of leaders uh, of extraordinary ability and commitment uh, to those in need on a number of fronts. Uh, Lois will be leaving us uh, at the end of uh, next month uh, to accept the position of Chief Operating Officer uh, for the Center of Human Development uh, in Springfield, Massachusetts. And I know Lois is here this morning. We've had the opportunity to work with her and her team uh, for a number of years. They've been invaluable strategic partners and their, their leadership has inspired many of us uh, during, uh, her leadership has inspired many of us during your tenure here. So Lois, I know you're in the back there somewhere because I say, Lois, thank you very much for your leadership. And then finally, uh, I want to recognize uh, Howard Pitkin, who is retiring as uh, Commissioner of Banking uh, and is uh, after a, really a 40-year career at the department, uh, holding a number of positions there, as I say, most recently as Commissioner, uh, both under the uh, REL and Malloy administrations. And uh, there's a long list of things that Howard uh, has done, but the two things I wanted to just talk about just briefly, personally, is when I came down here in the, late, uh, in the early 90s, uh, we were in the middle of a banking crisis uh, at the state level, at the federal level, and uh, the bank that we had bought at the time, Society for Savings, was undergoing some significant challenges. Uh, Ralph Shalansky was the commissioner at the time and Howard was his deputy and I can say unequivocally uh, that Howard's commitment, Ralph's commitment to both the consumers uh, that society served but also to the long-term viability of that bank at the time and how the transaction was gonna go forward uh, was, uh, was absolutely superb. Uh, being able to walk that fine line between the viability of the bank and the need to serve the consumers was, was uh, as I say, uh, something that I will always remember, and I mentioned that to him the other day on the phone. And secondly, more recently, Julio Concepcion and I had to deal, uh, we needed uh, some particular guidance on establishing the, the Hartford Home Ownership Initiative uh, that's now been launched quite successfully with over 15 uh, homes purchased as a result of the support from Hartford Hospital and Aetna and others. Uh, and uh, Howard is retiring here, and I just want to thank Howard, for your extraordinary service and particularly for your help here to us, most recently on the Hartford uh, uh, Homeowner Initiative. I know you're down here somewhere, Howard. Thank you very much and so best wishes as you go forward. So with that, I got a couple of uh, uh, announcements that we want to make internally. Uh, I'm going to introduce the um, HYPE officers for 2015. Uh, who have been recently uh, elected. Uh, and if they can all stand and we can recognize them, I think most of them are here this morning. Uh, Adam McLaughlin, uh, who is the hype chair. Uh, Kevin Ehrlich, who is the vice, uh, vice chair of uh, ambassadors. Uh, Nick Pinto, who is the vice chair for civic uh, engagement. Uh, Stella Stefano uh, Giordano, who is the vice chair of community involvement. Um, uh, uh, Tyree Peluso, who is the vice chair of personal and professional development. Uh, and uh, Rachel Santagross, who is the uh, Vice Chair of Social Events. If you're all here, Stan, thank you all very much. Oh, you all stood together, all right. I can tell that Julie organized you very well this morning. I'm glad that I'm not the only one who reports to her. Um, we have six new Hartford investors. Uh, this is a great way to start the year. We have a number of new investors to welcome this morning, so if you can, uh, uh, join in some very warm rounds of applause for some of these. We have six new Hartford investors to introduce and the six, uh, the six representatives or the representatives of those six organizations could stand as I call your name and we'll welcome you as a group. Cooperative Systems out of Windsor, Scott Spans and Steve Martuccio, I believe are here. Diversified Project Management out of East Hartford, Bob Margolis and Bill Clegg. 
Hart here in Hartford, Catherine Gibbons Way and Greg Grant, the Latino Way here in Hartford, Maria Lino and Giovanna Torres, Two Design LLC in New Britain with Mark Fisher, and our sixth Hartford investor, TSM Design Inc. here in Hartford, uh, Nancy Erbeshad. Thank you all very much. We appreciate the. Um, And then we have three new regional investors uh, to introduce this morning uh, who are in, uh, companies and firms that have uh, in, committed an additional uh, set of funds to uh, move the agenda forward. And uh, the first of those three, uh, I'll introduce each one of them and ask their representatives to stand so we can welcome them individually. First is Center Plan, uh, based here in Hartford, uh, is a development company that was founded in 2006 for the purpose of delivering services in real estate development acquisition and asset rep repurchasing on commercial and residential properties. Center Plan has quickly gained a reputation as a leader in the integration of competent development services with expertise in planning, design, permitting, and financing of new and rehabilitated or repositioned real estate. Uh, suffice it to say that Center Plan has also uh, taken a leadership role on the whole downtown north development. Uh, we are delighted to have them on as investors and representing San Center Plan today are Bob Landino, Jason Rudnick, and Yves Joseph. I know they're here somewhere. Gentlemen, if you could stand up, thank you very, very much. Our second regional investor is Fuller, Foley Carrier Services here in Hartford, which provides help at every turn to more than 42,000 companies across the country. Uh, their teams of compliance specialists help motor carriers to comply with the complex regulations of the Federal Department of Transportation. They help new companies set up, insure, and register their businesses and with us today from Fuller Carrier Services, I hope he's here, is Richard Pummel. Richard, are you here? Right, Richard, thank you very much. We appreciate the investment. Thank you. And then our third regional investor is Integrated and Employer Solutions uh, in Bloomfield, uh, which streamlines the payroll process for clients and provides the highest level of customer service. Their cutting edge technology sets them apart from the national players as they are focused on providing the best possible human resources and payroll service and are accessible uh, in the cloud, uh, in, in the cloud and process real time, they're supported by account managers. All of their clients have access to the reports on the web in Excel or PDF. Uh, with us today from Integrated Employer Solutions is Michael Moreau, Vice President, and Dana Reeves, a Senior President and Managing Partner. You're both here. Thank you all very much. Thank you for their commitment. And as we roll through this, we have two new strategic partners to recognize, uh, two organizations that have been with us in, as Hartford investors for a long time. Uh, and we're delighted that they have taken that extra step up, both in terms of their engagement and their support. Uh, the first is Achieve Hartford, uh, which since 2008 has been building uh, the sense of shared responsibility for closing this all-important achievement gap between Hartford and the rest of the state. Uh, we are truly lucky to have Achieve Hartford and all of those, who, those of you who fund and support the organization playing the role of community convener and independent critical friend to our school district. Uh, and as this note says from Paul Holzer, if you haven't heard from them, you will on ways your business can impact and benefit from quality education in our city. I always like the good marketing plug that's in here. So with us today from Chief Hartford are Mary Crean, the Chief Development Officer, Sandra Ward, Deputy Director, and Paul Holzer, Executive Director. I know you're out there, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then our other uh, strategic partner to welcome this morning is Hartford's Camp Current, which is, all of you know, is the oldest and largest free summer day program in the country. It was founded in 1894 and provides a free summer camp experience now for over 1,000 Hartford children in the ages of 5 to 12. Camp promotes uh, positive youth development and healthy lifestyle choices through active learning and fun activities. And with us today are some of the most shy and retiring people that you will ever uh, meet. Uh, from Camp Current are Josh Reese, the Executive Director and CEO, McKinley Albert, Director of Development and Administration, Megar Drustum, de Development Assistant, Charlie Lenore, who's the Acting Chair of the Board, and Jay Arcata, Arcata the uh, Vice Chairman. I know they're all over there. Please stand up and let us be recognized. And while it's not written in here, in my little notes, I know that Josh Reese and McKinley Albert would both say, want me to say, if you haven't heard from them, you will. And if you haven't heard from them, I'd like to know if you haven't heard from them, because you'd be the only person who haven't heard from them. Uh, delighted to have them here. And then finally, we have a new leadership investor. Uh, when uh, the uh, Hartford Current and the Tribune Company went through its uh, changes here over the last year, uh, we talked to Rick Daniels uh, at the Hartford Current, and they have, uh, again, continued their commitment uh, as a leadership investor. 
uh, as a result of the television stations uh, through the Tribune transaction uh, moving off into a separate company, uh, we had the opportunity to sit down with Mark Oxton uh, at Fox Connecticut and uh, had the conversation about whether the television station in its own right uh, would come aboard as a uh, leadership investor. We had a great conversation uh, with him. Uh, we're delighted that they have come on. The relationship that we have with these two media outlets, not just their sponsorships of the Rising Star Breakfast, but the relationships we have in them in terms of promoting the messages about economic development, growth in the city, growth in the region are absolutely invaluable uh, to our ability to get the message across, not just within this region, uh, but across, uh, across the country. So we are very pleased uh, that in addition to Rick Daniels and the Hartford Current staying on board uh, under that media name and under that very important brand that we now have the opportunity to add Fox Connecticut to it as well. I know Mark is here. Mark Uxton, can you just stand up so we can recognize you? Thank you very, very much. We greatly appreciate it. And I would also say on behalf of Mark and Rick, if you haven't heard from them, you will um, under that leadership. So it's now my pleasure to uh, move to the uh, heart of this, of this morning's uh, breakfast, and that is the mayor, and ask Joe Gianni to come up here in a second uh, and say a few words about Bank of America and to introduce, uh, introduce the mayor. Uh, we have had a long-standing relationship with Bank of America. They have been an invaluable uh, leadership investor of ours uh, for many, many years. Our interaction with people like Joe and Kevin Cunningham, uh, who is the uh, leader, uh, the uh, market leader here in Connecticut, uh, Dean Andrews, and a number of others. This is a, a bank that, while uh, certainly headquartered in Charlotte with leadership around a global bank, uh, has continued its commitment uh, to this city and this region, uh, both in its financial support, not only of the alliance, but a number of other organizations here, all focused on ensuring the economic vitality uh, is alive and well here in the, in, the, in the city. Working with people like Joe and Kevin and Dean is a real pleasure. And uh, Joe says that he told me I'm supposed to introduce him, that he's standing in this morning for uh, Kevin Cunningham. I'm, I'm sure he's going to explain why I had to say standing in. So, Joe, if you want to work your way up here with the mayor, I think you've got the bass. Uh, the, guy, the mayor has the guitar, and uh, I've got the microphone. So uh, please welcome uh, to the podium uh, Joe Gianni, the local market delivery and senior vice president, segment executive for Bank of America. Joe. Uh, Dean, have we paid our le uh, leadership investment dues to the Metro Hartford? Yeah. <laughs> Morning. Thank you for that kind introduction, Oz. Um, I'd like to begin by thanking Oz and the staff of the Alliance for all the work they've done in 2014. I think we can all agree that the vital work of recruitment of new companies, expansion of existing companies, and the development of young professionals, only part of what the Alliance does, is critical to improving the quality of life for all residents in our region. On behalf of my Connecticut colleagues, who last year volunteered approximately 35,000 hours of their time to support critical nonprofit organizations throughout our state, and just as important, they work to serve each of you, our customers, and our friends, each day at the eight U.S. trust offices, the 17 Merrill Lynch offices, and the 140 Bank of America banking centers, all in Connecticut, we are so pleased to sponsor today's breakfast. And I'm glad that Oz mentioned the, uh, I was standing in for our state president for, for a couple of reasons, because when I recap this with Kevin Cunningham, if he didn't mention that, it would have been a long meeting, very long meeting. And uh, because I was thinking about standing in and th that concept, because I just passed my 25-year anniversary in banking. And as Oz knows, when it comes to uh, the relationship of the Alliance and Bank of America and both of our predecessor organizations, I have had and I continue to have the privilege and the good fortune to either attend alongside or stand in for a veritable who's who of banking in the local market. Joel Alvord, Ridgely Bullock, Bill Moeller, Rick Copeland, Bob Higgins, Rich Higginbotham, Jim Connolly, Chandler Howard, Eileen Krauss, Gunnar Overstrom, and Susan Rotner, to name a few. In fact, I've actually made a career of standing in for others. But today, I introduce a man who does not stand in, but a compassionate man who stands out. A couple of years ago, at a meeting of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, I attended a Latino leadership tribute honoring Mayor Segarra with a leadership award for his commitment to bringing diverse communities together. And standing alongside him were Philadelphia's Mayor Michael Nutter, Mayor Kevin Johnson, 
of Sacramento, former mayor of Los Angeles, Antonio Villarayagosa. And I remember the pride I had for our mayor as he recounted his personal story and the story of Hartford, how he came to Hartford at age 15 and began to work for a better education, for the betterment of this community. And much later, as mayor, the work bringing people together to replace pessimism with optimism and encourage us to see Hartford's potential and its possibilities. But to understand our mayor and his passion for Hartford, one doesn't need to go out of state to hear a tribute. No, one needs to go to the Hartford stage, to the Artists Collective, the Old State House, the Bushnell, Theater Works, the Wadsworth, the Mark Twain House, Charter Oak Cultural Center, and all the multiple gems that this city has. It's not ironic that we're gathered here in this wonderful Infinity Music Hall. This mayor has partnered with foundations and corporations to encourage the investment in the arts because he understands the arts and culture is a key economic catalyst in this local community. Our mayor is always talking with people all around the city, not just stopping in to be seen, He's there to hear what people have to say, to see what's happening and what's needed firsthand, and to breathe in its beauty and touch the fabric of the city. He's brought a can-do spirit back into Hartford, and the city's moving forward with Yukon and Trinity, joining St. Joseph and Capital Community. Our local institutions of higher education are so important to attracting and development two things we all love, great minds and good jobs. Etiquette dictates when introducing a mayor, one uses the term the honorable. The term the honorable with this mayor, our mayor, is not a mere formality, it's reality. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the honorable Pedro Segarra, mayor of Hartford. Well, uh, I would like to thank my producer. <laughs> it's great to be here again. I, I think this is the fourth or the fifth year uh, that I'm here, and I, I want to thank you, Joe, for that very gracious uh, introduction, and Bank of America for your involvement uh, in our city. I want to thank Oz and the Metro Hartford Alliance for all the work that you do, uh, for connecting our business community but more importantly for connecting the business community very strongly with our local, our state, and our federal government. I know that all of you work very hard to produce these events and also to assist our community. I'm very proud to continue to see more and more businesses signing up with the Metro Hartford Alliance, not only the number, but the quality of the businesses that are signing up. Speaking of our growing business community, for those of you who have been here before, and for those of you who have not been here before, isn't this a great place? I mean, it is just, it is just amazing. I'm sure that you are impressed and I want you to come back more often, especially here. The food is really, really good here for those who haven't been, especially the soups in these cold winter days. Um, and try some of our other restaurants. Uh, I know that Bears, I uh, had lunch there last week. Uh, the brisket just keeps on getting better. Um, also, uh, 50L, smaller, but more cozy and very friendly. And um, to everyone here, I, I wish you all a very happy and productive new year. I wanna, Charmaine, thank you. Thank you for what you have done for this city in terms of improving the knowledge of our community to the importance of reforesting our city and educating our youth about what that infrastructure, that green infrastructure does for them and their community. So I want to thank you, and I'll definitely be at your award uh, this, this afternoon. Thank you so much. And also to the folks at Camp Current, um, it's more than just a summer camp. It's more than just a summer camp. It is a place where tens of thousands of the children of this city have received not only a great summer experience, but some vision of hope and to see some things that they had never experienced before. And that helps them 
in their development. So thank you so much and congratulations on getting some money from the state for uh, infrastructure improvement. That's really great. Uh, to everyone here, I want to wish you a very productive and fruitful 2015. And as always, I want to acknowledge each and every one of you for your commitment to the progress of Connecticut Capital City for our beloved city of Hartford. That, of course, is the main uh, object of today's uh, presentation. And um, we always like to check in at, uh, at this time of the year. Uh, this time, I'm going to keep my speaking time very short because this is structured to be a conversation, and I want to have plenty of time for questions. But I want to set some background here. And each and every year that I've appeared here, I've always started out with a quote. And I've quoted uh, our beloved Mark Twain. I've uh, quoted Nelson Mandela. And this year, I thought I'd, I'll stay closer to home and share with you what the people have been saying recently about Hartford as a way of getting the conversation started. Just this past weekend in the New York Times, the artist, professor, and son of the well-known photographer Jack Delano, Pablo Delano, wrote a piece about Hartford, and he describes it this way, quote, Hartford bears the scars and reaps the benefit of the urban renewal and social upheaval of the mid-20th century. For a small city, Hartford boasts extraordinary, extraordinary ethnic diversity and fluidity. Visually breathtaking, I quickly realized that negative stereotypes about the city were misinformed at best, end quote. And he went on to say, Hartford's built environment manifests this creative spirit. It tells a story of a brash new beauty, but also of respect for historical form. Now, I know that we're not artists here, and uh, we're not nearly that prolific, but some of our colleagues are saying similar things. In this week's Hartford Current, when talking about yet another higher education institution expanding into our downtown, Trinity College, the executive vice president of CBRE New England, John McCormick, said this. Trinity's decision to establish a downtown presence is just another indication that both corporations and institutions are looking to capitalize on the growing momentum in the central business district. And to our friend and colleague, Andy Bissett, Executive Vice President and Chief Administrative Officer at The Travelers, had this to say recently in the Hartford Business Journal. Recent renovations downtown have temporarily changed my normal morning commute, leaving me with two options for getting to work. One ride is about 10 minutes shorter than the other. I take the longer way. The longer way is a refreshing reminder of good things taking place in the ever-evolving city of Hartford. Now, just to be clear, I certainly had nothing to do with these statements being made, uh, but I wholeheartedly agree. These individuals were responding to what they see around them, both physically and otherwise. To me, these comments reflect growing and palpable optimism that exists in Hartford right now. What I am proud of is contributing to that sense of optimism. There's a very different energy in Hartford today compared with just a handful of years ago. It is a positive energy. That is something that has been quite in short supply for quite some time. It just didn't happen. It is the result of hard work by my administration, the people and those who care about it, including everyone in this room, our first responders, our community. We grew tired of pessimism and decided to step boldly and begin to turn things around. And today, the city of Hartford, it's better than it's been in recent history. We have more economic development than we've had in the past 40 years. Our schools have the highest graduation rate ever recorded. Our city is safer than it's been in decades. There's more foot traffic downtown than ever before. And a perfect example of that is that we are here today at Infinity Hall. I remember when we were here wearing hard hats and shovels, and now look, those shovels and hard hats have been getting quite a workout. And we're not done yet. This is Hartford progress. So I want to give you some highlights and quick updates on items we discuss 
last year at this time. I had initially wanted to do sort of like a, a scoreboard or what do you call it, just a checkoff list of all the things that I have presented in past breakfast and just sort of so keep track of what's been accomplished and what's in process. But um, I want to give some highlights and quick updates on, on some of the items, and, and I look forward to your conversation. Uh, in 2014, over 40 new businesses opened in the city of Hartford. Infinity and Ted's Bear Smokehouse are included in that. We created over 300 new jobs and retained over 1,000 jobs through lease renewals and or expansions. Renewals and expansions include Khan Resnick and the Hartford. And those numbers build on similar growth the previous year and the year before that. I told you that the next time that we got together, we would have a new superintendent of schools and a new chief operating officer. Dr. Beth, Shivano Narvaez, and Daryl Hill have hit the ground running with professionalism, dedication, and unequivocal expertise. Our bond rating is stable, and this year, through the sale of municipal bonds, our borrowing costs were lower, were the lowest in decades. I want to acknowledge our treasurer, Adam Cloud, and Chief Operating Officer Daryl Hill for their diligence. We're working together to keep Hartford's credit strong and the credit rating, uh, uh, can make it a strategic point to e improve upon it in the future as well. Last year, I told you about 10 developments in the planning stages or on the way, just to give people a chance to live in a downtown. Now, a year later, our 1,200 units of housing are starting to come online, and we're seeing something that we have not seen for a while. Moving trucks are starting to move people into new apartments downtown. That is going to be a familiar sight, so get used to it. Who else is coming to Hartford? Trinity is coming to Constitution Plaza. Yukon is coming to the Times Building. Businesses are moving in from the suburbs, and entrepreneurs are starting new, innovative comp companies and enterprises. Our SC2 challenge, it's on its way. We had our first recent uh, round of awards, and we expect to move into the second phase with the final awards. This is an innovative project that is going to bring us ideas that we can generate and nurture to move our city forward. The American Athletic Conference Championships will be happening this year in March at the Excel Center. In 2016, USA Gymnastics will return again, the third time during my tenure, to have the national championships in, uh, in an Olympic year, coincide with an Olympic year. And as you may see in the news, the Cyclocross Nationals will be here in 2017. We hope to continue to grow the list of championships in this city, hopefully to expand with championships in the field of baseball and soccer as well. As you may have heard, next year we will have a double-A baseball team playing right here in Hartford. We recently announced the creation of a stadium authority that will issue revenue bonds for construction of the ballpark, which will save the city a minimum of $10 million in lease payments. As I said a few months ago, doing nothing was not an option, at least not for me. We've seen nothing done in that part of the city for far too long. And with tremendous inputs from residents all across the city, we are moving forward. The development of downtown North, which will become a new neighborhood, just a short walk away from our core business district, is a transformational project in Hartford. It eliminates blights, it creates jobs, and it will give us another reason to be proud of our great city. We will be breaking ground at the beginning of February. Actually, that's like next month. <laughs> You're all invited. I'll arrange for good weather. Coltsville received its national park status by Congress. That is huge for us. That initiative was expertly spearheaded by Congressman Larson. I want to thank him dearly, as well as the other members of the federal delegation. I went to Washington to testify twice on the city's behalf and worked closely with him in support of this monumental effort. This decision will help shape the renaissance 
that the city of Hartford is undergoing and will lead to long-term job growth in the region and increase the focus of heritage and tourism in our state. I want to say that I have no regrets, no regrets of the substantial investments that the city has made financially and otherwise in moving this project forward. Our own pop-up retail program, which converted empty storefronts in the downtown area, came to a close this year. Two of the three participating retail stores signed long-term leases in downtown, and the other will expand in Parkville. Over the course of 11 months, the iConnect program produced over 45 events, attracting over 9,000 shoppers, and engaged 45 vendors and individual artists from across the state of Connecticut and the region. We used this platform, we used this platform to launch our first Shop Hartford campaign to promote local shopping. JetBlue has selected Hartford as their site for One Thing That's Green campaign in 2015. Other cities that have won in the past are Portland, Oregon, Washington, D.C., Las Vegas, and New York City. This spring, we'll partner up with Knox Parks to create a green space, possibly in Westport Park. And something that's not here, and it's embargoed, so I can't give you the details. I have I've been contacted by the U.S. Conference of Mayors to, award, to um, also advise us that we will be getting a very nice award and prize at the upcoming Winter Conference of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. I'll fill you in on the details later after the embargo is lifted. I think you get the point. Economic development is booming in the capital city. Now, I want to be clear again that this just doesn't happen. All of this significant development is the result of hard work and focus. And the reality is that we need more revenue for the capital city. Like most cities across the country, every year we face the reality of shrinking revenues and increasing expenses. We cannot place further burden on the taxpayers, but we also cannot cut back on f any further on essential services. To be clear, essential services are public safety, the maintenance of our streets and parks, and we cannot cut any further. What we've chosen to do instead is to restructure our city government and work as hard as we can to bring more revenue into our city and then work with the legislator on, legislature on items that will place Hartford on a long-term path to fiscal stability. Let me also put some numbers on the table in two areas that are absolutely critical, public safety and education. Yesterday afternoon, we released our 2014 crime statistics. We compared our numbers today to 2011 when Police Chief James Rovella and I started to work together with laser focus on reducing violent crimes. And the results are clear. Serious crime is declining in Hartford, and it continues to decrease. Our homicides have gone down 17% since last year and 30% since 2011. Violent crime in our downtown particularly is extremely rare. Since 2011, there have been three homicides in downtown, one of them taking place at a juice bar that is now closed. When you examine all the factors that contribute to gun violence or serious violence, they tell the story of a complex issue that requires a comprehensive approach. And it requires involvement from various community stakeholders in order to create change. I think that as mayor, my strategy to keep down, uh, crime down is simple. Number one, make sure that our young people have opportunities that are increased through youth employment, through year-round activities, job training, because all this contributes to increase economic development, and the more increased economic developments, the more jobs, the more opportunities, the less need to engage in criminal behavior. Two, partner up with organizations, the state, community leaders, businesses, the corporate community, anyone who is invested in our mission and our philosophy. And three, make sure that our police force has the resources that they need to engage in preventative police work, community policing, the PAL program, and the ability to hire more officers. As we move forward, that will remain my focus. I want to continue for us to work together to keep our families safe, keep our children safe, our businesses thriving, and our city on a positive trajectory. We're approaching another budget season. And as you know, unlike the federal government, we're obligated to pass a balanced budget every year. My priority 
will be public safety as it has always been. This will allow us to build on our progress and ensure that all hands are on deck in keeping our residents and businesses safe. Lastly, I want to update you on public schools. We all know that good schools are an anchor for economic development and for financial stability. Through the years in our city, I've talked with many families who wanted to stay in Hartford but felt that they weren't comfortable with the performance of our school system. That is changing. Last year, we recruited a new superintendent, and I honestly can say uh, that Beth Shevano Narvaez has hit the ground running, working positively to continue the momentum of our schools. Since day one, her approach has been to listen, to learn, to exercise leadership, and to lead with compassion. I have truly been impressed. She is the right person at the right place at the right time, and she has something to build on. High school's graduation rates, which seven years ago stood at a low 29%, has completely reversed itself and hit a landmark high, a landmark high of 71.2% in 2013, according to the State Department of Education. That represents a steady climb of more than 43 percentage points since 2006. When Harvard Public Schools launched an ambitious effort to reform its educational system and also began calculating its graduation rate based on a four-year cohort. For Hartford Public Schools, that means that out of every 10 students who enrolled in high school as a freshman in 2009, more than seven of them graduated. Make no mistake, the improvement of our schools and the increased safety of our city in concert have contributed to the significant investment in our city. Public education, public safety, higher education, jobs, housing, economic development, arts, culture, entertainment, restaurants. When we say Hartford has it, we mean it. We are a great capital city, and we're becoming even greater with each passing day. I can keep going on on the list of things that are happening in Hartford. It gets longer all the time. But I haven't highlighted all of the great things that are happening in our neighborhoods, but I really would like to hear from you. So thank you for what has been a very productive partnership. Thank you for moving our city forward together. And with that, I want to entertain your questions and engage you in a conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Glenn Winfrey, head of school for uh, Covenant Preparatory School. Yes, We're a private, independent, tuition-free middle school uh, here in Hartford, Connecticut. You talked about the importance of education. Um, I, I was curious uh, about if you could say what would be your top priorities as you think about education. You mentioned the graduation rate, but if we're to be successful as we supplement the public schools providing alternative education, what would be the top things that you'd say uh, for us to be successful? You know, our educational strategies have been very numerous, but there's a couple of things that I think that continue to be very important. One of the best things that I've seen that really can impact the future of our children is making investments early on and moving towards universal pre-K. That means the number of children that we have in grades uh, ages three, four, and five. And in that uh, area, I think that we've made significant accomplishments, not only locally. Uh, not so many years ago, we were at 40%. We're now over 80% of our children involved in early uh, preschool programs. That is significant to build up their vocabulary, to have an impact uh, during the time that children's brain development are at its optimum. So I think that's extremely important. But I think that the issue of equity which the superintendent is partnering up with the board is extremely important. We cannot have a dual system of education in our city. We need to have all schools, all schools provide a great education for each and every child, no matter where they reside in the city and no matter what their financial condition. 
So that is something that's extremely important. And then we have all the other projects that we're having. Uh, middle school years are very important. We tend to lose a lot of kids during the middle years. And we also need to make sure that we take advantage to create more aptitude amongst our students so they can be prepared for the challenges of colleges. You know, I have listened with great uh, enthusiasm to the president's uh, plan to provide community colleges as an alternative for the first two years of college. I am a product of a community college. I know the wonderful work that community colleges can have upon the lives of people. At 15 years of age, just had turned 16, a community college took a chance on me when I did not have a high school diploma and when I was basically uh, moving around the city uh, trying to get myself settled in. And I think that uh, that has paid off not only for myself, but also for the city that gave me opportunity. So there is, you know, we always talk about top priorities. Obviously, funding is a very important top priority. We need to have the funding. We cannot deliver the product if we don't have the, the resources. But, you know, I'm, I tend to be hyperactive. I like to move on lots of different things at once because everything is connected, right? Uh, so, um, but I, I would say making investments earlier on, the issue of equity and the issue of funding to make sure that we deliver the promise to our students. Mayor, um, we had Scott Phelps come back as the uh, convention visitor guy, but he's statewide. Isn't it time we started to think of our own convention or visitor bureau again? We have it all. We have everything now, hotels and attractions and now sports. And maybe it's time to think about our own convention or visitor bureau. Now it's a statewide operation, which is very good, but now every city our size around the country has its own convention or visitor bureau. Can we think about that again? Yeah, I'll definitely th think about it. I think that in everything that I've done, I've tried to partner up. Uh, it's uh, good in terms of the financial picture when we partner up rather than undertake our own effort in terms of the economies that you generate through a collaborative impact approach. Uh, but we are growing and we have to uh, consider that our local needs are often best served when we have our own entities. Having said that, I think that the partnerships that we have developed with the state, uh, when they are strategic and when they're done from a point of mutual respect of recognizing the state interest but also recognizing the local interest, that they can be highly effective. The 1,200 units that are being launched with the state's support in the downtown area we had to be very strategic. We had to think about how do we get our local permitting processes improved so that as the state was able to work with the city to get developers to come in, that all those permits would not take, as in the past, an enormous amount of time and at the same time uh, discourage people from wanting to do construction in Hartford and that was changed around. We had to think collaboratively about what would be the benefits to the city and the states in terms of revenue, but we also had to think about the fact that the pro formas, when they came to us to do these projects, didn't add up, and that the city had to do its share to decrease building permits. In 2012 and 2013, I believe that we reduced that by half, so as to create an incentive. We also did some tax fixing agreements. So, so that's a long response to your question, but what I'm trying to get at is if we can continue to generate creative ways that we can partner up with the state rather than just going it alone, that I think that that works better. The other thing is that the visitors come to look at venues that are also very well connected to the state, our state capital, our old state house, and many other venues that are basically state. So now we need to bring in the federal government. We're gonna have the only national park in the state and it's going to be themed in a way that is unlike many of the other national parks so let's work together let's try to strategize towards having a collaborative impact approach because i would like to do a lot of things on my own and have our resources but 
at the same time, I've been a real cheapskate when it comes to, to spending. Yes. Yes, Mr. Sagar, I had a question. Um, in regards to the 10 million we plan on saving and lease payments with the new part coming, do we have plans on where that money is going to be distributed throughout Hartford? I'm sorry? Do we have plans already in place as to where that money is going to be distributed throughout Hartford? The money well, will be saving. The, the savings come from lease payments. The way that the deal is structured for the stadium component is that we have sources of revenue that come in to support the stadium component. Mm -hmm. And then from those uh, resources, we then pay out the lease payments. What we're going to save is uh, $10 million minimum, but that basically is that. That is not, if, if, if you look at the way that we're structuring the stadium, and, and that's a very important question because we're not budgeting city monies, right, to go specifically towards the construction of the stadium. We are having a stadium authority that basically generates revenue bonds in order to build the stadium to take advantage of much lower borrowing costs, and that's where the savings come. And it really takes, it, it makes us more competitive in terms of, uh, have the project move forward because we're not as constrained mm -hmm. and we're able to generate those savings. What we do accomplish in the process is that we avoid any risk of us being on the hook for payments so that the resources that we do have, we can put those resources to work in the priority areas. Thank you. Mayor, good morning. Uh, Tim Stewart, former mayor of New Britain and president of Greater New Britain Chamber. On that same note of the Rockcats, first of all, let me wish you well in dealing with this Thank new you. ownership group. Uh, I, I just took the bus when I, I just realized how close we are to New Britain. It only, yeah. took, it only took us like 12 <laughs> minutes to get there. And the, the ride back from New Britain was even shorter. It was only eight minutes. Just, wa just watch out for the airplanes landing on there. You'll be okay. <laughs> Uh, my question to you is, um, you know, obviously, uh, we wish you well uh, you. with this endeavor. Um, and in order for us to prepare for their eventual departure, I'd like to know where you are with your local, state, and federal approvals uh, to put shovels in the ground and make that project a reality. Uh, the project has cleared our city council. Uh, the project has cleared our zoning and planning commission with the last uh, action is having the special uh, permit for the stadium approved. Uh, redevelopment is on board. We're just uh, waiting for the authority to be finalized. Uh, in terms of the federal, uh, there's, I don't think any federal regulations other than whatever environmental uh, regulations there are at the state uh, and on the federal level. Uh, I don't anticipate that there's gonna be any problems with those. So I think that we're pretty much uh, on, on track. Uh, the state traffic authority also needed to act, and I think that we've come to an agreement as to what needs to happen in order to co coordinate the traffic component. So I think we're pretty much on schedule. Um, I would like to engage in a healthy conversation with the city of New Britain. Uh, as we get over six million visitors, um, a year into our city. I think that there are some great venues in New Britain that can benefit from that uh, number of visits that we're getting. You have a wonderful arts museum. You have a lot of diversity there. You have uh, great restaurants. Uh, I mean, I think that there is a way that we can partner up, and I'm looking forward to do that. Um, I think I consider ourselves as part of the same region, and I've always uh, been a little bit adverse to silo thinking amongst our municipalities. And I think that the day that we work with each other in a more collaborative way, the more that we can accomplish for our, for our region and for our state. One more, anybody have a final question? Kate, yes, you're right here in the middle. Hi, um, Kate Emery. And I just want to first say, I think what you've been doing in the city has been phenomenal. And as somebody who spends a fair amount of time down there, it is really exciting to see the, the buzz that, that you're feeling around. So um, my question is, I think a big...
component of the success of Hartford, future success of Hartford, is going to be in attracting entrepreneurs. Yes. And just want to know what kinds of plans uh, and ideas are out there in order to support those entrepreneurs coming to Hartford. Well, the, the first I think I spoke about, which is raising the quality of education in our city and decreasing uh, crime in order to make it more attractive for people to come in. I think that doing things such as the Strong City, Strong Communities Challenge of encouraging uh, thinkers, uh, people who have uh, innovation ideas, people who have ideas about how our city's economy can grow, to bring them in and attract them by providing a forum for those ideas to be harvested and supported. I think our economic development unit uh, of the city needs to work in partnership with the Alliance and others to be able to figure out uh, ways in which these new entrepreneurs can integrate themselves into our city structure and fabric. I think that's very important. So it requires continuing to get uh, resources and working with the state economic development uh, folks, uh, Catherine Smith and others, to make sure that we're partnering up and even beyond that to the federal level. I think that we really need uh, sort of a one-stop shopping that is highly visible and supportive of entrepreneurs. Uh, we've been able to do that when we select a group of merchants and help them along. I think that we have to be able, uh, as the city continues to expand and we create more space for retail, more space for offices, to be able to do that with some degree of coordination, again, together, because it's in our interest, it's in the state's best interest, it's in the federal government's best interest. And, you know, like I said, cities, cities such as Hartford, and Haven, Bridgeport, we're the ones that generate a lot of the economic activity and the jobs for the state. So it's incumbent of us to work together to realize our aspirations for the state. Our goals are not too different from the state goals in terms of what we want to see accomplished. So let's partner up, let's continue the momentum, and let's keep Hartford moving forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mayor, thank you uh, very much uh, for taking the time this morning again for the f fifth or sixth year and giving us an update of the attitude is, as we all know, is critical. Tim, delighted you're here. Though I haven't seen you in a while. Delighted to be back out in your, in your neck of the woods later this afternoon to meet with uh, someone who's the same name uh, leads the city of New Britain. So I uh, want to thank you all for being here. We'll send out uh, tell us what you think email. Uh, we welcome your thoughts and comments on that as we structure these, uh, these breakfasts. I want to thank Infinity Hall. I know Dan Hinks is back there. Dan, again, thanks to you and your team for hosting us this morning. We greatly, uh, greatly appreciate it. I want to thank uh, Joe Gianni and everyone at Bank of America for being our corporate sponsors, uh, at the Hartford Current and Fox CT uh, for, uh, 61 for being our, uh, for our media sponsors again this morning. Uh, Pulse of the Region is on uh, every uh, Saturday at uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, the uh, agents are after me madly to move off this show to a larger channel, so you better catch me while I'm still there. Uh, but uh, we will uh, be, uh, we appreciate those of you who have given us some ideas for topics as we go forward each Saturday, and uh, Brian Boy, I know, will be reaching out to you. So lastly, our next, as I said at the beginning, our first uh, health council uh, uh, program is with Linda Rosenberg, and one of the things that uh, the mayor mentioned in public safety, we know where this whole issue of mental health stands. Uh, both for individuals and the community. So we're delighted to have Linda Rosenberg uh, with us. In fact, we'll have her on the uh, radio show either this Saturday or next Saturday. Also want to call your attention that we do are working on a date with Kathy Malloy and the uh, Greater Hartford Arts Council for our Rising Star Breakfast in February, and as I mentioned earlier with Jim Redeker uh, for one in March, and our annual celebration will be on March 23rd over at the Bushnell. Mayor, again, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>